my friends. So now we're officially here. Now officially everything is working. Coach Borino, let me put that beautiful thing down here. Here you go, so that you know my name, but you know my name. We're friends, right? We've been hanging out here every week on Rockstars. So, if you have any questions, post them in the comments. We'll stay for about an hour. I have my lovely espresso, piccolo. So we're going to chat. We're going to talk about how to get business, how to generate leads. how to get more clients, help more people, make more money without losing your hair, without going gray or bold, you know, without stressing too much. There will always be a level of stress, of course. It's the nature of the beast, whether it's this business or any business, any other company you run, any other uh, adventure where you're on your own, where you don't have a boss, you don't have a manager, you know, that's the freedom and the curse that we have. Nobody telling you what to do, which is great, but also dangerous, right? So if you have questions, post them. I'll be happy to answer as many as I can. But I wanted to start with a couple of the posts that came in on um, rock stars. Talk Fizzballs. Yes, let's talk Fizzballs, David. That's great. Let me know if I can help you with Fizzballs. So here are two posts that came in in the last couple of days. This is from Nathan. Nathan says, I made my first Fizzball calls, 25 minutes, and I'm meeting two tomorrow. Pretty cool, right? Nathan is in PATH. This was posted in our PATH private group. PATH is my private coaching program. Many of you are members. Cool to have you. And I want to compare it to this one. This is my man, Ken, great guy. We met in person. He came to D.C. He's working in Chicago, a hardworking agent. So he says, a bit of disappointment this week, made over 100 calls, multiple door knocks, and nothing. On calling, the only ones that answered realistic was the wrong number. I did appreciate the few that called me back and let me know it was a wrong number so I can make a note and see no answers. All visit, one sold the house to a friend, two decided they liked the neighborhood, don't want to move. If they did, would use the same neighborhood, nothing available. So now, two cool agents, two good people, hardworking, both of you guys are hardworking guys. You know my system, you're not newbies to any of this. One goes out, 25 minutes, lands two appointments with for sale owners. The other one hustles, what, about a day? Took probably a good part of the day or maybe a weekend, right, Ken, something like that? And get exactly zero appointments. So I wanted to chat with you what happens when you encounter this kind of day? You work, you really put your heart and soul into it, you hustle, and still nothing. Has that ever happened to you? Of course it happened. It happens to anybody. It happens to everybody who's out there. You have great days and you have shitty days. You have very productive days where things are just lining up and, man, you're unstoppable, right? You're en fuego. And there are days where, like, no matter what, you just can't get things off the ground. Everything you touch just disintegrates. It's not going well. So I want to talk to you about what's causing it and what can you do about it. So number one, be prepared that it's going to happen. Whether you use online prospecting, uh, marketing, advertising, you do the good old-fashioned approach, chasing expires, going after for sold by owners, open houses, door knock, any of these methods. There will always be a time when things will not go well, so to speak. Now, you got to be careful, and I'm going to qualify that. But first, just be ready for it. I love that old Chinese saying that says, "Be uh, hope for sunshine, but be prepared for rain. Hope for sunshine, but be prepared for rain. That means you go in with good expectations, because the mindset is critical in this. 90% of your success is really mindset. 90%, 90% of your success is in your mind. It starts there. With the right set of beliefs, with the right focus. Let's pop my cable. That wouldn't be fun. Mindset. It starts with the right mindset. Now, I know you guys. You, Kenneth, and, and, and you rock stars are the positive group that we attract here. You already are at the level of the pro where you have the right set of beliefs, right set of expectations. But if you don't, start there. Because it's going to trip you. Now, I don't even pretend to understand how God, higher power, universe, the whatever name you want to call it, it's just a label, how it's set up. I really don't know. Just like I don't know how my car works. I don't know. If I pop the hood, I don't know what these parts do. But I just know it's going to get me from one point to another. If I want to go here from Starbucks for a cup of coffee, I know how to do that without understanding the mechanics. So this is the same thing. This is why the expectations and the mindset and your focus, what you focus on, is so important. So evaluate. If things did go poorly that day, now poorly, again, I'm going to qualify what poorly really is because you did get good results. It's just not what you expected. 
But look back and say, okay, what did I feel? What did I expect? What were my thoughts? What was going through my head after the first rejection or first no? Did I say, oh, it's going to be one of those days again. It's not going to work. People are going to reject me. It's going to be hard. I want to get this over with. I'd rather be doing something else, watching General Hospital. Now, I'm teasing. I know you guys don't, but you get my point. What goes through your mind before you enter is critical. This is the part where we talk about the state, the being in a good state, you know, being in a passionate state, positive, optimistic state. It is critical. Now, for many years, I fought this. I hated this concept of this airy-fairy bullshit in your head, you know, the, the mindset, the positive thinking, oh, give me money, give me money, give me money. Money's going to rain on me. It won't rain on you, obviously. But it is so important because 90% of your success starts with the right mindset. Because then the question is not, will it work? Will I get this done? The only question you're going to keep asking with the right mindset is how? How? Now, so many motivational speakers tell you that beautiful story about Thomas Edison. And they will inspire you how 10,000 failures led to one success. And I said, fuck that. If you have to go to 10,000 failures, you're doing something wrong, brother. Whether you're Edison or a real estate rock star, you know what I mean? You shouldn't be going through that much struggle to realize something is not right here. So I'm not a huge fan of that story. I'm not going to blow smoke up your ass like, stick with it and keep going. But no matter what happens, you show up and you do your best. No matter what happens, you show up and you do your best. No matter what happened five minutes ago, a year ago, an hour ago, or last week, you show up and do your fucking best. Do the best you can with what you have. You have the right to have shitty days. You have the right to feel off. You have the right to be grumpy. You have the right to be disappointed. But you don't have the right to allow that experience control your business, your actions, and your income. You don't have the luxury to say, I don't feel like it. This doesn't feel good. You can't. You're a professional. You're a pro. And if you want to have the income of the 200, 300, 400, 500,000 and up, you have to be in the league with the right mindset and with the right of show. Now, think about it this way. Uh, we have a good friend whose husband became a brain surgeon recently, about two or three years ago, down in San Diego. And his salary is going to be about $380,000, 382 if I'm not mistaken. He's going to be a neurosurgeon. Took him over 12 years of school. He also has about $300,000 in student loans. He's going to be making $382,000. Every single one of you has the capacity to make the same amount of money. Every single one of you. Now, most of you don't make it. Ask yourself why. You want to know why? 90% of the mindset. You don't have the standards and a lifestyle that equals that kind of income. Now, I'm not saying you should go out and max out your credit cards and buy expensive cars and homes. But it's your expectations. What do you expect from your life? See, where you are right now, the living standard you have, whether you're living on $10,000 a month, God forbid, $20,000, $30,000 a month or, or more, is your minimum standard. And you know that you will not dip below that, whether it's $3,000 or $30,000 or more. So raising your standards and raising your expectations, raising your mindset is the first foundation on which you're going to start building and says, no less than this. Does that make sense? So, long answer to a small post, right? You would think. Number one, mindset. Work on that every single day. My grandpa had this saying. He says, you cannot make a steak if you bring the chicken to the kitchen. You will not end up with a steak dinner if you bring chicken to the kitchen. Big part of your mindset is what you put in. What do you bring in your mental kitchen? What do you read in the morning? What is the first thing you listen to? What is your morning ritual? We are habitual creatures. What is your habit in the morning? How do you start your day? And what do you do when things don't go well? Or what do you do before things don't go well? What is the ritual there? How do you prepare? How do you set up your mindset? How do you set up this instrument, so to speak, like a rock star would, before you go on stage? For those of you who are athletes, musicians, what do you do? You warm up, you practice, you prepare. Do you do that before you start talking to people? When it's money time? When it's dollars time? If I were standing behind you, would I hear you at your best? 
when you're on the phone, when you're prospecting, when you're following up? Would I see you at your best when I would be watching you with my camera, recording you, talking to an expired listing at the door? Are you really delivering your best? Is this really your A game? Because here's the thing. If you fuck up the first four seconds, if you screw up the first few seconds of the interaction, whether it's on the phone, in person, any type of interaction you have, any type of communication you have, you're setting up the first impression. If that crumbles, you're either too strong, too high, too aggressive, or too needy, too nice, too nervous, too tentative, not confident enough, or overcompensating for the lack of confidence, being too scripted and too salesy, you will not get the result you're hoping for. And it happens very quickly. Let me give you another example. I'm buying a new motorcycle. I thought it's time to really step it up, so I'm getting this beautiful cruiser. Really nice, you know. They call it a transcontinental. It's pretty awesome. So over the last five days, it's been about five days now, I've been talking to different dealerships because I want a special customization. I want a special color. I want it in red. They're not as common as the black ones. And so I'm, I'm, I'm talking to these different sales, salespeople. It's mostly guys, sales guys. Not mostly, but all of them were guys. And because I teach this stuff, and I've become an expert on communication, presentation, connection, trust, and all that, it gives me the opportunity to step back and observe. What is the experience I have talking to, I'm talking to Tommy, I'm talking to Victor, I'm talking to Vic, and I'm talking to one more guy, Bobby. These are to sell different dealerships in the area, within about 80 miles from me. Very different experience from the moment they say hello within two, three seconds. And I'm actually writing notes. I'm tracking it. Because I want to be the scientist, the experiment of the human interaction of trying to sell me something. And these are expensive bikes. I'm going to end up spending about $32,000 on the motorcycle. So there's a lot at stake. And it's amazing to see the difference and how quickly my subconscious mind reacts, whether it's confidence and connection and trust and authenticity, which Tommy is winning right now, or being absolutely salesy, untrustworthy within the first few seconds, which is Bobby. <laughs> so we have Tommy here, trustworthy, seems really nice, never met any of these guys in person except Vic and Bobby. These guys are all knowledgeable. They all want to help, and they, of course, all want to sell me a bike because they're going to make some money. Do you deliver your A game? How would your prospects, your customers, your clients, your sphere of influence react? How do they react? Not verbally, not the stuff they say, but emotionally. Super important. So what do you do? You practice. That's number one. You be in a good state. That's number two. Number three, you put good stuff in your kitchen. That means what you watch, what you read, what you post, what you talk about, all that impacts hugely that that's computer up here because if you put garbage in guess what you're not gonna get pretty stuff out you're gonna get shitty stuff out if it stresses you out if it doesn't uh, make you inspired if it doesn't make you better it doesn't belong there you need to be a super guardian and man that gate don't let shit get in because it will just by default you try watching CNN in the morning. Uh, I go to the gym in the morning. Occasionally, when I'm warming up on the machine, they have these giant screens, and you can't run away from it. There's fucking CNN. Within two minutes, my state changed. Within two minutes, I could feel the tension. I could feel the unpleasant emotions, which is really what they want, because they know whether you're negative up or positive up, you're in a heightened emotional state, which means they're going to sell you shit. That's the whole purpose of television, of course. Are you getting me? So be very diligent. Be dutifully careful about what allows in, what is allowed to go in. Important mindset. Now, you're going to have bad days. You're going to have days when things will not go well. What I want you to evaluate is take a step back. Have a shot of something if you want. A good scotch helps if you need to kind of reset because sometimes I know it's rough and I know it hurts. And I know no matter what this positive dude, Borino, a la Tony Robbins of real estate will tell you, it hurts, it gets disappointing, it gets frustrating, it gets confusing, and you may feel like either this shit is not for me, I'm not going to do expireds or fizzballs or whatever else, which we both know it's not the brightest decision, not the smartest decision. It kind of makes sense based on your state, but if you check the statistics, if you check your MLS, you already know many of those expireds will go back on the market with a different agent. You already know that many of those for sale by owners will end up listing with an agent. So statistically, logically, you know there is business out there. 
So here's what I encourage you to do. One, take a break. Take a little break. Whether it's five minutes to play with your cat, go for a walk with your spouse, play with your kids, watch something funny on YouTube, pull up my old videos. That's hilarity right there. <laughs> Do what it takes to reset. Do something physical. That's what helps me. Hop on a bicycle or a motorcycle like I do. I love riding my bike. It's a nice little zen for me when I need to reset and kind of clear my head. You are your best coach. So figure out what helps you reset and get back because you must get back. When I was uh, a young actor in Czechoslovakia, one of the things uh, we were trained to do is ride horses. And I did a couple of movies when I was about 16 or 17 when I'm supposed to ride a horse. So they hired a trainer, and I spent about six weeks training. And in one of the scenes, in one of the movies, it was this beautiful love story where I'm riding this beautiful horse, and I fall off. And so we spent about six weeks practicing because the director thought it was going to be really cool. We're going to have this dolly shot following the horse that it's clear it's me. It's not a stuntman. It's not going to look hokey. And I will actually do the fall where they have these set up these phones, and it's pretty safe to fall off. So I spent about six weeks riding a horse, and then one day, Unbeknownst to me, they gave me a horse named Nero. Nero, like the emperor, Roman Emperor Nero. You know, he was a pretty big asshole. It really didn't dawn on me right away how fitting the name was for this fucking beast. It was a gorgeous horse, powerful, beautiful, brown, gorgeous, gorgeous, magnificent animal, but also an asshole, <laughs> a total asshole. So we're riding through these woods, and it's a beautiful part of the country where they have these, this, this, this river and these like little lakes. And there are trees and these trails we're just riding, and it's fantastic. We're having a good time. I'm getting the hang of it. And suddenly this idiot decides to just shake me off. Like he's going to get rid of me. So we're going in this light trot, and suddenly he, like a fucking rocket ship, just bolts. And what I didn't see was he makes this sudden turn, and there's a branch. He ducks. I don't. He keeps going. I stop. <laughs> I fly off the fucking horse. Knocks me right here. I fly down, knocks the wind out of me, horses behind me, chaos. There were like three or four other horses behind me going full speed because they now freaked out. And I'm like on the ground and I'm thinking, okay, anything broken? Shit, nothing broken. All right. So I start kind of getting up. It was, I was really shaken and I was bruised. And I'm like, fuck this. This is, this is not a good idea. <laughs> you know, this horse was a mistake and now I understand why they gave it to me. So that I don't get scared of falling. And so the first thing, the lead horse, who was the trainer, he brings my horse back. They grab it. They bring it back. And he says, jump right back on. <laughs> Dude, not a fucking chance. I'm not going on that beast ever again. Narrow? No. No, jump right back on. The longer you wait, and for those of you guys who are horse riders, you know, the longer you wait, the less of a chance you have to get back on a horse. And some people never get back. Like if you had a bad accident, skiing accident, whatever, you know how sometimes it's hard to get back on it? You must. I got back on the horse, we brought him back, and my confidence was somewhat restored, although slightly bruised. Get back on the horse. When things don't go well for you, when you get smacked after a bad listing presentation, after a bad negotiation, bad prospecting, you got to back on. Because it's not going to be your doubt whether expireds work. Deep inside, you know, things like expireds, of course they work. Fizzbos, of course they work. Open houses, whatever. All these methods work, and there's plenty of evidence to support it. But what's going to get damaged is your opinion of yourself, because you need to feed the self-image, I will get the job done, I will do what it takes, I'm not a quitter. I will get the job done, I will do what it takes, I'm not a quitter. You got to get back on. Now, with that, here's what I would offer. Look back at the experience and like step back as a scientist, just like I'm evaluating the motorcycle sales guys. Evaluate as if you were your own manager or a researcher. And you're walking behind yourself with a notepad and you're observing. What would you observe in terms of your mindset, in terms of your communication, in terms of your expectations? And then once you have the data, this is why I said you got some good data. You know what the most important part of the data was? I'm speaking to you specifically, Kenneth. You hustled. You didn't let the first discouragement, the second discouragement, the third, where so many would quit, you didn't let that stop you. You kept going. That's a huge self-confidence boost. That's a huge one up, total 10 points for sticking with it. That alone is worth a lot. It's worth more than a listing. 
because now you know, no matter what this crazy business throws at me, no matter what's going to happen, I will come back. I got what it takes. I got the balls, I got the desire, I got the drive. That's so important that you didn't quit. You finished the mission. You finished where so many else would have quit. And I applaud that. I think that alone is worth a lot. Because it speaks volume of your commitment, your desire, and your drive. And it also shows me that you don't let emotions distract you. How you feel. If you feel good, awesome. If you don't feel good, get the shit done anyway. So that's the most important lesson from all of that. But besides that, I encourage you guys, if things don't go well, where you expect, well, shit, I should have gotten something out of this. What can you change? Can you change who you're talking to? Can you change your mindset? Can you change how you're talking to them? Can you change the communication channels? Sometimes better, better than a phone call can be a text. Sometimes visit. Can you change the time of the day? Can you change the area? There's all kinds of variables that you can play with. And if you keep simple track, just a few notes, you can go back and say, OK, this didn't work. Can we do more of something else? And then once you have that data, you can go back and say, all right, let's come up with a different plan. Plan B. Not dropping it, not quitting, but let's figure out how. How do I get it? Because you know, somebody's going to get them. What do they do? What do they have? Who are they that you're not? And it's in, very, in most cases, this doesn't require giant overtooling. But I promise you, if I was that researcher behind you, we could probably come up with three or four different things we could do to make it b work better next time, to get different results. Now, the last thing I'm going to give you is focus on things you can control. That's the difference, and we talked about it in our last session. For those of you guys who are on PATH, who will be getting Chapter 3, probably today or tomorrow, you will hear me talk about goals versus targets, goals, goals versus objectives. Let me illustrate the difference. You have a goal. You go out and prospect to get, let's say, one listing in the next seven days. That's a goal, and it's a good one. I like it. Our whole Objective in the path for many of you is to get a listing a week. Build your business up to a listing a week. And it's a process. It takes time. But that's my goal for you. Now, some of you say, I want to do half of that. Awesome. Nothing wrong with that. Some of you want to do way more. Perfect. The process and the systems don't change. The numbers change. That's all. But let's say this is your goal. You set up a plan where you say, I'm going to talk to, let's say, 10 high probability leads. I'm going to follow up with 15 existing leads. I'm going to touch base with 10 sphere of influence people. I'm going to do one good open house. And I assume that these things may result in one listing a week. Now, this is just an example. Obviously, your numbers, your approach, and your system is very different. Can you guys see it? Yeah. Okay. So now, here's the difference. These are objectives. These are targets. This is a goal. Your stress, your confusion, your frustration, and your oh, desire to quit comes from you trying to control this one listing a week. You can't. You do not have direct control over it. So where the breakdown occurs is this is very often not connected to this. This does not result in this. Now, you do control this. Those should be your objectives. That's where the control is. That's where your focus needs to be. These are activities that you directly control. And they need to collaborate, corroborate, be connected, and be linked up with your goals. But whether I get my goal or not, I don't control directly. Now, I'll evaluate. If I don't make my goal, I can look at my activities, my targets. Did I, miss, did I make, meet my targets? Did I make my objectives? Because I can control whether I'm going to do one good open house, although I don't control how many people show up. But I can evaluate. Did my marketing and prospecting and promotion of the open house resulted in good results? I control that. Can I connect 10 sphere of influence? I directly control that. 15 existing leads, can I set up a follow-up so that I do connect with them? Of course. Can I connect with 10 high probability leads? Absolutely yes. So I focus on that and then I evaluate my results. Here's what I tell you guys. You have to tack and adjust and adjust and adjust and evaluate. To expect this to work perfectly every single time is foolish. That's never going to happen. It doesn't work that way. Because there are all these moving parts. Some you control, some you don't. Some sometimes work, some sometimes don't. 
And none of the systems, even the systems you get from me, which I believe are the best systems you can possibly get because it's just business in a box, even those don't work 100% of the time. I'm not here to pretend or hype it up saying, oh, it's always going to work. Of course not. That would be crazy. But what do you think would happen if you continuously keep up with these type of targets? Will you get some results? Well, there's a very good chance you will. And if you won't, we can pop the hood now and we can troubleshoot. Is it because the numbers were off? Is it because the quality of the leads, the targets were off? Where was the problem? Is it because of your mindset? Is it because of your approach? It's simple to troubleshoot. That's the beautiful thing about what I teach you guys, that it's duplicatable, it's repairable, where you can evaluate. Or do I need to add an element to it? Do I need to add texting to it? Do I have my expired package together? How is my follow-up? Is the frequency off? Is it my communication? Maybe I say something that doesn't resonate with people, that puts them off. But all of these steps that are required can be evaluated, you can improve them, you can increase the quality, quantity, and you can troubleshoot. Just like Kenneth, I promise you, I know you. You're going to go back, you're going to pop the hood, and you go, all right, what can I do better next time? And sometimes it just means go back. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. Because I would hold an open house, same listing, same neighborhood, same day of the week. One time I would get 15, 20, 30 people, and sometimes I would get two. The promotion was about the same. Everything was about the same. But because I don't have direct control over it, I would evaluate. Can I do something better? Can I improve? Or is it just a fluke? Is it just, just one of those things? Or I'm not going to stress too much over it because I know as long as I about hold my course, as long as I about hit my targets, this will take care of itself. And if it doesn't, I can just fix it. Does that all make sense, guys? Is this helpful? Yes? Barbara says, just, well, let me show you what Barbara says. Hold on. Do, 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 do. Bear with me, my dear friends. I am putting your comments on the screen. There you go. There it is. So Ken, he says, yes, always makes sense. Good. Keep me posted, Ken. I'm curious to see. Where you're gonna, where are you gonna find? So Barbara, I just ordered the complete success plus. Can't wait. Excellent to have you on board, Barbara. You're gonna get all the systems. We're gonna ship it priority mail. You're gonna get in a three, four days. Everything else will be available online instantly. I told my old boss I was leaving his company. I'm upping my income up yours too. <laughs> I like that, Greg. That's pretty funny. All right. Cool. So uh, David wants some help with Fizbos. Let me help you. How can I watch this presentation later? Is there a link? Borino is brilliant. Nato, thank you so much. What a nice, kind thing to say. We leave it posted here in Rockstars. You can watch it here. It's also on the Listing University. The archive of all these sessions are there. But I'm glad you, you, you enjoy it. That's good. Great as usual. Thank you, Francis. Lily, my pleasure. My pleasure, Lily. So let's talk some Fizbos. Since you saw that post earlier, what is the best process? First, you know what your mindset needs to be? Those people need your help. They will tell you all kinds of things. They will say all kinds of stuff. We have a buyer. We have an agent. Our friend is in the business. My wife used to be a real estate agent. We've sold a house before. Go to hell. Jump in a lake. You will, see, you will see and hear all kinds of stuff from for sale by owners. Your mindset must be like a snowplow. Just go right through it. Not in an arrogant way, but don't let that affect you. The best rule I can give you when it comes to FISBOS. Please write these down. Best rule, here it is. Unless and until the for sale by owner sells and closes or lists, preferably with you or somebody else, sometimes that will happen, it's game on. Don't worry about any of these. These are very often nothing but brushes because they get bombarded by so many agents who learned a script that they pulled somewhere online. They memorize this closing technique and they're doing it en masse, calling 50, 20 fizzballs, hoping that one will stick, annoying most of them, not getting good results, giving up. you got to take a different approach. But number one is understand that this is just a human reaction. It's just like you walking into the store, you have a wallet ready, you have your American Express on standby, 
But when the salesperson approaches you, you say, yeah, exactly, just looking. You know what I'm saying? This is there, just looking. Because they have no reason to trust you yet. They have no reason to, to, to believe you, to trust you. To them, you may be a murderer. You may be a psychopath. They don't know. There are all kinds of people out there, unfortunately, these days. So they have no reason to trust you. They have no reason to believe that you want to genuinely help them. On contrary, they believe all you want is the listing, quick commission, get paid, you don't give a shit about them. That has been their experience, whether through television, movies, anybody saw Glengarry Gun Ross? Pretty uplifting, happy movie about our industry, wasn't it? So knowing that, you go in understanding you're going to get this. Now, of course, you expect sunshine, but you're prepared for rain. You expect nice people, and most of them will be very nice. Most of them will be pleasant if you do it right. Huh, that's the trick. If you don't, Borino rule number one. You wrote it down? Unless they sell and close or list with you or another agent, it's game on. Borino rule number two. The only exception to rule number one is if they're not motivated. The problem is you will not be able to figure out right away whether they're motivated or not because they're going to hide that information from you. They're going to cloak it. Because they know that if they open up to you, if they start being honest with you, not you, you are rock stars, you are awesome, but all those other asshole salespeople will bash them over the head. They will, they will exploit that. They will manipulate that. And it's the last thing they want. Who wants to be manipulated? Do you want to be sold and manipulated? I don't. So they will, they will protect themselves by saying, we don't have to sell, we have all the time in the world. Many times, it's bullshit. Now. You may establish relationship with them, and through the Fisborino system, which if you're on a path, you have. If you want to be on path, go to goborino.com, goborino.com, go check out the path. You will get this book and a bunch of other books. You get a bunch of stuff from me, and I will teach you how to do referrals, Fisbos, expires. All that is part of it. Now, if you want to genuinely help, it needs to be genuine and authentic. But Rather than reciting scripts, you want to connect, you want to help. That's the overall attitude. Be prepared for a pushback. The reality is, most for sale by owners end up selling with an agent, meaning they list with an agent. They just don't know it yet. And you trying to convince them, you trying to convert them right away would be like uh, proposing to a girl on a first date. It doesn't work that way. It's too soon, so go easy. Working fizzballs requires few skills. Good communication, skill number one, patience, expertise, of course, you need to know what you're talking about, and being willing to genuinely help regardless of the outcome. You're not attached to the outcome because it's the attachment that creates neediness. So you simply open up, have a little conversation with them, go preview the property, spend about 10 minutes chatting with them. After you develop a relationship, after you have a few communication exchanges with them, texts, emails, calls, and visits, then you will be able to establish whether they're motivated or not. But I can tell you, even I was wrong many times where I thought these people are not going anywhere. They're not that motivated. I don't read any of the core driving emotions there. I don't feel any pleasure or pain drivers in place. Uh, no, I don't want to work with these people. And I was wrong. So give it time. Be patient about it. Be diligent in your approach because I'd rather follow up too much, meaning keep in touch longer than I would, until I'm 100% sure. Most of these people think about it this way. If they're willing to invite strangers to their house, if they're willing to invest a weekend to do an open house, if they put the sign up, if they answer the phone, if they're doing all that stuff, it, is, it takes time, it takes some money, it takes effort. Why would they do all that if moving is really not that important to them? Think about it. So don't let them fool you. Don't let them mislead you thinking they're not motivated. Very often they are. And if nothing else, use these encounters as your practice, as your opportunity to be a good communicator. That's one of the most important skills you can develop, is to be comfortable in conversations with strangers and make them feel comfortable with you, make them feel connected with you. That's a huge skill. And even with all the gadgets and the latest tools and technology we have, it will still be one of the most important core qualities and abilities you need to develop. Because these tools that we have, and we have plenty of awesome tools, are, help us initiate the conversation, but they don't carry the conversation. For that, you need to pick up the good old-fashioned phone or knock on the door or have them in the office or at least text to be able to build that trust and relationship. Here's the bottom line. They must like you, trust you, and respect you to even consider doing business with you. So master that. Master 
what it takes, how to communicate, so people like you, so people respect you, and so they trust you. And it's a skill. There's nothing magical about it. There is no gift given to God. Yes, very few people have that. We know they're born with it. They're charming. They're awesome. But you and I know we got to work on it. I had to work on it. It took me some time. I'm a slow learner. You can do it a lot faster, but it's a skill you need to practice and develop. So that's the secret to fizzballs. Now, there's more to it than that, of course. And I cannot turn you into a fizzball rock star in one little <laughs> live session like this one. But if you're considering it and you have fizzballs in your area, just pay attention how many of those are turning into signs. How many of those are being listed by other agents? I guarantee you there's a big chunk of those. Some will sell on their own. Nothing you can do about that. Some will never sell. They will either rent it out, they will stay. Nothing you can do about that. But focus on those who will end up listing, and many of them will. The numbers vary by area. But if you saw my interview I did with PJ, PJ, what was his last name? Just escaped me. He's the CEO of Fisber, big site. And they track it. They say 7 out of 10 list with an agent. 7 out of 10. So there's a huge opportunity. So do work them. Go after them. Practice. Here's the best part. If you work expireds or FISBOs, it's a little scary at first. It takes some time to really get the hang of it, right? Feels a little uneasy and people are a little kind of tentative to you. You can totally mess it up today. You can totally say the wrong thing, ask the wrong question, not be on your A game. There'll be more tomorrow. There'll be another one tomorrow. There'll be plenty more. There will always be more. So don't worry about it too much. You're not going to get it perfect the first time. So don't try. Just get better, get better, get better, get better. And just like Kenneth, evaluate. What can I do better? What part of the interaction, communication, or the process can I improve? That's progress. And if you stick with the progress, the perfection will take care of itself. OK. Lily has a good question. Is there a book regarding how to communicate and establish trust? Funny you ask, Lily. Yes, there is. And I wrote it. And I can actually show it to you if I have it handy. Hang on a second. I'm in my office. It is called Core Influence. And I specifically wrote it for you guys, for my real estate rock stars. Let's see if I have a copy here so I can show you what it looks like. I don't think I do. Bear with me. We have another space here where we store some of our books. Yeah, yeah, I have it. So let me show you what it looks like. This is a set of... I don't want to say guidelines, Lily, but a set of rules and uh, techniques and tips and strategies. You also get a stack of cards where you can practice certain, uh, I don't like to use the word scripts because I don't want you to memorize scripts that would make you a telemarketer, but like a dialogue outlines that will help you stay on track. It comes with videos and coaching. It's part of the path too. So if you're going to do path with me second month, you're going to get this in the mail from me. Plus I will coach you how to do that. It is a skill that is essential. Now the cool thing is with the real estate, parenting, relationships, friends, the principles are the same because people are the same. We are all the same. We're wired the same way. So once you master it, it works everywhere. I use it on my kids. Just don't tell them, please. <laughs> I, I want to keep it between us, okay? So yeah, you can get that. Amy has a question. After connecting, oops, here we go. After connecting with a FISBO, sending free websites, what should I do to keep connecting without being pushy or obvious? Excellent question, Amy. You were doing Path with me, right? So I just happen to have, and this is really a coincidence, the FISBO Arena, which is another system that you're going to get as part of the Path, or you can just get it. So here is what I can show you. We talk about the psychology of for sale by owner, how to break the barriers, what is the process, where to find FISBOs, the first email to send, what are their most things that they're worried about. Let me get into the follow-up. That's what I'm looking for. All right. So, there is a whole bunch of things here that you're going to incorporate. Here's the trick. Most for sale by owners, the stuff that they get, whether it's over the phone or in the mail, is about the agent, why they should list with them, why it's a bad idea to go FISBO, and here's some proof and evidence, and the stuff that they don't care about at that stage because they believe they can get it done. Now, if you flip it, flip the position of a for sale by owner, from their perspective, they can save $8,000, $10,000, $15,000, wouldn't you try at least? From their perspective, it makes a lot of sense. Now, you and I know it's a dumb idea. You and I know they're going to end up listing, and you and I know they don't net as much money going for sale by owner in many cases, so it's, it's financially not as logical to us. But they're civilians. They don't know. So to them, it's like, oh, look how clever I am. I am saving all this money. All my neighbors are stupid. 
No, they're not. They're smarter than you. It's just you can't tell them. They need to experience it. So instead of convincing them and trying to arm wrestle them, which seldom works, most of the time it annoys them and it ruins your chance of getting a listing later, be cool and helpful. Be helpful. Help them. Guide them. So what are some of the things you can help them? One of the best things you can do is they advertise their cell number. You tell them, Joe, you know, having your cell number on that sign out there, not the best idea. You know, especially these days where the privacy issues and, and stealing someone's identity, I wouldn't do that. Why don't I help you set up a Google Voice? It's a free service, free phone number, different phone number. You can screen the calls. It will transcribe the messages for you and it will write, route them, bounce them to your phone. Doesn't cost you anything. I'll be more than happy to set it up for you. Now I'm offering something valuable. Now I'm also psychologically starting to introduce certain problems that come with selling your house on your own. But I don't do it in a fear-mongering way. I'm doing it in a cool, helpful way because I present a problem and I offer a solution to it. So that's one of the things you can do. You can offer to do an open house for them. You can help them design a flyer. You can help them put an ad on Craigslist. There's a whole bunch of things. The Fisborino system is like 20 different things, including things meaning mail pieces that go with it, emails that you send, the dialogues that you use, and all that stuff. So, Emmy, if you have it, use it. If you don't have it, it's coming. If you want it, you can order it, fisboreno.com. Get it. But if you're just thinking about it, if you put yourself in a Fisbo's position, what would be some of the things that would be helpful? Websites where they can advertise, how to change the phone number to Google Voice. There's a whole bunch of things you can offer. Small, simple things. Now, don't overload them with too much. That's why I don't, I'm not a big fan of some agents who have like a whole Fisbo book. Like they offer 15 things in one shot. The Fisbo will look at it and go, oh, fuck, no, and they put it away. As opposed to one little piece at a time. So, and it's always a two-step process, which is beautiful because now it gives you a chance to follow up with them weekly. So one week you offer them something like, let's put an ad on Craigslist. I'll help you. Here are some guidelines. Here are how you take good pictures. Here are some descriptions that work. Go to it, Mr. Fisbo. You follow up a week later. Hey, I was looking at Craigslist. I didn't see your ad there. Did you do it? Now, what would most Fisbo's do? No, we were too busy. They will be impressed, it will be helpful, but they will not get the job done because little by little they're going to realize it takes a lot to sell a house, even in a hot market. But ask yourself this. At the end, average Fisbo what? Six weeks on average, maybe more, maybe less. It just depends. Hmm. Sorry about it. I forgot to do the pinky. Much better. So, who gets the listing at the end? An agent who annoys them, pushes them, who is salesy, who is trying to convince them, insult them saying, well, it's a dumb idea to go Fisbo and try to save money. Or someone like you, who's cool, patient, helpful, kind, nice, and authentic. You're going to win every single time. Why wouldn't you? There's no benefit to being aggressive. Now, I'm not saying when the opportunity is not there, don't take it. There may be a Fisbo that you really click, you hit it off right away, you have a nice conversation, and really jealous. You know, occasionally you, you encounter people like that. I'm not saying go, don't go for it, sure. But don't be disappointed or frustrated or confused or worse, ready to give up if it doesn't happen right away. It's a process. It's just like dating. It takes a little bit of time and a little bit of tango to, to tango, you know what I'm saying? So give it a little time because the cool thing is you just keep stuffing the pipe, new leads coming in, new leads coming in, the first ones start converting. And if you don't get them all, no big deal because you know the percentage will. And percentage of those will list with you. Yeah, baby. That's the whole secret. Stop in. Okay. Lily says, thank you so much. My pleasure. Anita says, thank you. How much are they saving if their house doesn't sell? Good question. It depends. Hard to tell. Vivian has a question. I just joined your chat. Welcome, Vivian. Good to have you. Do you recommend sending emails or calling first, or is it best to show up at their home? Good question, Vivian. If there is a for sale by owner in our neighborhood, just stop by. Knock on the door, smile, say, hi, my name is Vivian with Borino Real Estate. I see a for sale, for sale by owner sign. How much are you asking for your house, if I may ask? Oh, fantastic. How long has it been for sale? Would you mind giving me a super quick two-minute tour? I'm keeping up with the inventory in the neighborhood. You never know. Maybe I can send somebody your way. And I know probably house is not 100% ready. M maybe your beds are not made if your house is anything like mine. But I would appreciate just to get a quick tour. They say yes. You go in. You chat with them. They say no. No problem. May I keep in touch with you? Would you like to have a list of websites where you should promote your property? 
Would you like to know other homes that are for sale in the neighborhood? I'll be more than happy to email you a list. Fantastic. What's your name? What's your email? What's your phone number? Great chatting with you. Have a wonderful day. Done. So if you have a chance, visit. Now, sometimes you don't. Second thing, you call. Similar conversation. Do I cooperate with agents? Can you give me a quick five, ten minute tour? Most for sale by owners will have no problem with that. Now, if you don't have their phone number, don't have the address, all you have is an email, you email them. Same thing. Do you cooperate with agents? Can I have a quick tour? I'll be more than happy to help you sell it. Send buyers your way. No obligation. That's it. And then you follow up, you follow up, you follow up, you follow up. Because no matter what you do, some fizzballs at the beginning will not respond. Why? Because they think, Martha, I'm your husband. I'm smart. I will get this done myself. You watch. We don't need no stinky agents. <laughs> so be okay with that. It's fine. Follow up. Give them a week or two. Go back. First of all, they don't remember you. And second of all, just keep in touch. What's the worst that can happen? What if they really tell you off? Go to hell. Jump the lake. I'll be back in two weeks. No big deal. Because my emotions don't get in the way. Because I know that if I talk to 10 for sale by owners, I would expect at least two or three to list with me. Yay, I'll take that. Está bien? That's the secret. Now, there's a whole lot of more here. That's why it's a whole book. You know, it's what, about 80 pages, 65 pages. There's a whole bunch of videos where I'll walk you through it, teach you. It's good stuff. Come do the path with me. I'll teach you all this, all this stuff from the mindset, time management, communication, building your systems. It's a good, good program. GoBorino.com. Go check it out. Okie dokie. Amy says, wonderful. Thank you. I need to order Fisborino now. Get it. Yes, absolutely. You make it sound so easy. Kara, here is the secret. It is not that difficult. You know why I make it sound easy? And I get these comments, and I very much appreciate what you say, Kara. I, I, I honestly do. The reason I make it sound easy is, number one, I don't think it's that difficult, my mindset. And number two, I practice and practice and practice and practice. That's really the whole secret. There is no other magic element to it. I'm not attached to the outcome very much. If they tell me, get lost, what's that weird accent? Where are you from, Zanzibar? Uh, no big deal. You know, none of that can really shake me off very much. Because I know it's a numbers game. If I talk to 10, some will be nice, some not so much. Some will be leads, some not really. Some I want to work with, some not. And some will end up being awesome clients, and they will pay me a lot of money, send me referrals, <laughs> rinse, repeat. Mindset number one, strategic approach number two, some planning number three, practice, and then go out and do it a lot. And I mean a lot. If you, because here's the thing. If you talk to, let me ask you this, Kara. If you talk to 50 for sale by owners, would the, diff, would the conversation number one, first of all, be different than number 50? Yes or no? Would you sound more confident? Would you know better how to handle certain questions, how to set up appointments, how to probe for core driving emotions, how to really discover how motivated the sellers are between conversation number one and conversation number 50? Of course, it would be like nine and day. It would be like riding a bicycle for the first time and riding a bicycle for the 50th time. Absolutely. So go out and talk to 50 FISBOs, just as a practice. And watch how quickly you can get good at it. Now, same applies for open houses, how you handle people when they come to your open house. Same goes for how you talk to expired listings, how you generate leads, how you talk to your sphere of influence, how you follow up with leads. It's all the same concept. You practice and you do it a lot. With the right mindset and the right systems and the right planning, why wouldn't it work? Of course it would work. And if it doesn't work, just like Ken had that experience, you pop the hood, troubleshoot. What can I fix? There's always something to be fixed. That's the beautiful thing about this business. It's module repairable. It does not require any special skills you need to be born with. Any special looks, any special anything. You simply learn, how do I run a profitable, successful business? That's my job. That's all I do. That's what PATH is all about. That's why the freaking thing takes 52 weeks, because it takes 52 weeks to build a profitable, successful, repeatable business. And it takes all these systems that you're going to get piece by piece. And I want to help you. I want to help you not just for you to get it, but to actually apply it, put it in place, and have it running operational. Not perfect, but operational. That's what we're working on. And it takes these baby steps that we take, right? Every two weeks, there is something new that I throw at you. Read this book, do this exercise, watch this, watch this coaching session, write this down, 
There's a new one coming at you. You're going to spend a week doing something really interesting on chapter three of the path. I just recorded and released it for you. But that's what it takes. So you're not going to have built a super profitable, super successful business in a month. That's impossible. We tried that in a boot camp. That was an eight-week program. And you guys told me, and I heard you, it's overwhelming. It's too much. And I understand that. It's a lot in this business, from communication to mindset to psychology to planning to, to, to presentation to actually understanding the mechanics of the business to pricing to dealing with clients, dealing with problems, the legal stuff, contracts. I mean, there's a boatload of stuff, marketing, advertising, promotion, how you promote yourself, how you promote your properties. There's all kinds of things you need to master, how to hire the right staff, how to deal with other very incompetent agents, right? That idiot who brought you an offer and never heard from him for like a month, and you're like, what the hell? All that. It's not an easy business, but it can be very rewarding and very profitable. The good news is, once you master it, you're gonna realize you have very little competition. Very few people do this well. 5%, and that's just my estimate, 5% of the agents make most of the money. And I want you to be the 5%. And I believe that you guys who are doing Path With Me are that 5%. Because it shows commitment, it shows diligence, it shows drive, it shows desire. And I love that. Okay? All right, Barbara, the hardest part for me is the initial call to a fizzball. I stumble, but I'm hoping when all my books from Complete Success Plus get here, that will help you. It will absolutely help you, Barbara. It will help you in several ways. And I appreciate you coming on board. I'm looking forward to working with you. Number one, you're going to read the book. That's the first thing you should do. Number two, watch all the videos because you will have more understanding about human psychology, what makes people tick. With the Success Plus, you also get the core influence, which will absolutely help you master the communication. Be okay with stumbling at first. We all do. It's just like any other skill. I never played golf in my life. Never. I held the club a couple times just to putz around, nothing serious. So if I were to go on a regular big-ass 18-hole golf course, it would be a disaster, right? The ball would be flying all over the place. And no matter how positive, how passionate, how uh, positive thinking and all that shit that I teach, I would employ, that would not help my game. It would be a disaster. I would probably hurt somebody. <laughs> you know? Now imagine I hired a pro and I would go to a range and we would practice and I would hit a few balls every day and then I would go to the putting and I would practice my putts and I would practice short range, short game and long game. I'm trying to pretend I know all the terms. I have no idea what I'm talking about. But you understand, after about a month it would get better. I would develop a certain skill. Now, I may not be Tiger Woods level, but my game would have progressively improved as I do it more and more and more. You're getting the same thing. You're getting me to help you. I will teach you how to do that. You're getting resources, all the tools and systems, and that's just a matter of applying it. And you're going to get better. First you stumble, then you stumble less, then you get more comfortable, more confident. Next thing you know, you sound way better than even me. And you can, and you should, and I want you. I want you guys to be way more successful than I ever was. I was an okay agent at best. But I mastered this ability to inspire, to guide you, to teach you, and to make something so complicated as this business is, because God knows it can be. And I can break it down into simple things that make sense to you that you can implement and see results very quickly. That's become my strength, to show your results very quickly. That's what I want from you. That's what I want from my PATH students. Just like you saw, one, uh, one session of FISBOS, two appointments. That's what I want for every single one of you. And I see no reason why you couldn't do it. Because I believe in you, and many times more, <laughs> I believe more than you. I have less amount of doubts because I've seen people take this journey and really take off. And there are many examples, Jessica, Roxy, uh, Mike, tons of, tons of you guys are crushing it. Speaking of Mike, I have an invitation for you for next week. Another cool free coaching session with my man Mike Cribben. I talked to him on the phone this morning. Great guy, great agent who's doing some really cool stuff online. Now, here is what I like about Mr. Mike Cribben. This guy, last time I talked to him, there was a, we did a session about a year ago. He was in the range of about 80 homes or so. He took a long time off. He had some health issues. Now he's back in the game. Mike has several qualities, but one of them is he's very frugal. He doesn't like to spend hundreds and thousands of dollars on these online systems and, and buy leads and do all that stuff. He's watching his money. So he developed a very frugal but very effective way of generating leads online. So if you want to join us, I'll be talking to Mike next Tuesday. He has some presentation. I will show you. He will walk you through his system he uses right now. How he gets the leads, how he follows up with them, all these systems that he has connected. Very inexpensive and very effective. So we'll be talking next Tuesday right here in Rockstars. Same life as we're talking now. But Mike will join us. I don't know if you're here, Mike. Are you here? Oh, there you are. Yeah. There is my good man, Mike. Stumbling helps clients to see you as a real person. Very good point. Absolutely, yes. 
Dominic says, double listing boot camp spared us from a slow, painful exit from this business. So that, I appreciate that, Dominic. And you're doing great. And I'm happy to see that you're getting your bearings. Brian says, thank you, Borino. Always appreciate you and your insight. Brian, it's a pleasure working with you and watching you grow and grow your business. Anyway, that's it for today. Enjoyed the show. Enjoy chatting with you, as always. Plenty of business out there, guys. Start with the mindset of there are plenty of people who need my help. More than I can possibly handle. There's plenty of money, plenty of opportunities. All I have to do is keep taking these little small steps and the next step and the next step and the next step to get better, to get better, to grow, to get stronger. You can do that. You can do that.